pray real quick. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for opening eyes and hearts and opening my mouth and opening the heavens just to reveal your heart to each one. God, I thank you that uh, you are in the healing business, that you are Savior, that you are Lord, that there's nothing that you can't do to take off all of our limitations of you, uh, especially the ones that relate to, well, I know God can do that, but I don't know if he'll do that through me or for me. Uh, Lord, I thank you that everything about us that could hinder your work, you've removed in Jesus. Uh, and we just receive all that you want to do today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good. Well, um, I want to hit a couple things right away just because uh, they're relevant. I want to talk a little bit more about physical healing because I know uh, different ones are at different places with all that kind of stuff. Man, I know that uh, I had a big... Some of my story is I had a big emotional prejudice against those that talked about physical healing because I saw all the shenanigans of, of, of the shysters on TV. Yeah. Uh, I saw the YouTube videos of other people, you know, pulling shoes out to try to make it look like the leg was growing, and, you know, the people with the microphones in their ears to look like they're getting words of knowledge. And I saw all that stuff and people raking in the dough and they got, you know, huge big old houses with. Uh, air conditioning, uh, dog houses, and all that kind of stuff, and uh, and there's and there's children starving in Africa and India and Cambodia that never heard the gospel, and uh, and they're talking about Jesus, and then they're living large off of the shenanigans that pertain to the gospel. Now, some of those guys they do experience real miracles. Um, and so here's kind of the interesting thing. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 through 18, Jesus said, these signs will follow those who believe, right? It doesn't mean that they got their life in order. It doesn't mean that they've got their doctrine in order. It means that they believe enough to believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, that He's Savior, and that He wants people healed. That's all it means. So it, it doesn't mean that, hey, if somebody does a miracle uh, or a real miracle happens through them, that now you need to follow everything that they say and believe everything that they say or do everything that they do. Um, so you can stop sending money in to get your miracle because Jesus paid for your healing. Hallelujah. You don't have to pay for your healing. Okay? So when I discovered that, uh, you know, and, and let the Word of God kind of overcome that in me. You know, sometimes the, the enemy will try to get in there with an imitation to try, and then if you're not careful, you react against that, but then you have uh, thrown the baby out of the water, and there's something precious that he's trying to imitate to give you an offense, to give you a prejudice against it. For example, right now, uh, and for the last, you know, some odd years, the, the New Age movement talks a lot about the Christ in you. Mm -hmm. Christ in everybody and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And the, I'm telling you, man, the Christ that they're talking about mm -hmm. is not the Christ that Jesus is the Christ. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. That there is, there is one Lord Jesus Christ, <laughs> and if you don't have faith in Him, and, uh, uh, that you don't have the Christ of the Scriptures. Uh, there ain't everybody born with Christ in them. You're not. Uh, you have to be born again to get Christ in you. Okay, that's what the Word of God teaches. But sometimes uh, the enemy will come along with language that sounds really familiar, so that now when people who believe the Bible hear you talking about Christ in you, the hope of glory, I'm talking about Colossians 1:27. I'm talking about what Paul the Apostle taught. And what they hear is, oh, it's New Age. You know, you see what I mean? So sometimes the enemy will come in with something that seems kind of similar. He'll style it like that. But he's just trying to get, get keep people from the real deal. Um, and so what I wanna, want you all to know is a few things. When I go around teaching people, usually I'm training people how Jesus in you will do His works through you. He will heal today the same way that He uh, He did, you know, 2,000 years ago, with one exception. Now He does it through you. See, everybody's heard the verse, Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forever. I believe that verse. The only thing, that there is one thing that has changed. 
his location. Mm. Now he lives inside of you. Hallelujah. He's not less capable. He's not less willing. He's not less able. <coughs> now he just got to flow through you. So his spirit is your spirit. Your spirit is his spirit. You're one because you've been born again. How? God made you alive together with Christ, right? You're not like Frankenstein that he made you alive with electricity. He made you alive, how? By putting Christ in you. You know? So that's, that's who lives in you. Now, he's got to flow out through your heart and through your mind, through your actions, so that's the place where there's the gap. <clears throat> Everything in you that says, oh, you know what, I know Jesus could do that, but I can't. I know God loved Jesus that way, but not me. Mm-hmm. Now, all this stuff that makes an exception, that you, that your heart, that your mind throws up as a, as a reason why God can't, why God won't, why God shouldn't, <clears throat> and it's all about who? You, ain't it? <laughs> and, and you know what? You got one good big old answer for that. I was crucified with Christ 2,000 years ago. I was crucified with Christ. God moved all that stuff out of the way. And that's good to know. So, Jesus said this. In the same, verse, same chapter from last night. He said... Uh, John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the Father, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father. From now on, you've known him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and it's enough for us. And Jesus said, Have I been so long with you? And you have not come to know me, Father. He who has seen me has seen who? The Father. Okay, I want to let you know something. You see a lot of times in the Old Testament where it looks like, you know, just at least on the surface, it seems like God's God's allowing sickness and disease and that kind of stuff. Uh, You see, you know, and and I'm not even going to comment on all them things, but you need to understand something. That Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2 says this. It says, uh, God spoke in many portions in many ways to the Father in times past. So in times past, he spoke in many portions and in many ways to who? The fathers. But in these last days, he has spoken to us in the Son. So the Bible makes this distinction. You have a revelation of God that is progressive. It's bits and pieces. It's like puzzle pieces. You know, people have Bible verses to support and hear about any kind of screwball theology that, that there is out there. You know, there's this church uh, out of Kansas that go around picking at soldiers' funerals, and, uh, and it's near about everything. They got these signs that says, God hates fags, and God hates America, and God hates you, and you're going to hell, and that's about all they say. And you know what? They got a little Bible verse for just about everything. The problem is, is that Bible verses are like puzzle pieces. Jesus is like the cover. He is the Word made flesh. He is the revelation of the Father. And you don't just take these little Bible verses and put them together to make your own little picture. Right? You've got to look at the cover. Otherwise, you're going to end up cramming all these little Bible verses together to make a picture that looks nothing like who God really is. <coughs> they don't show you the truth. Now, there's some things that shifted because of the new covenant. Let me explain it to you this way. Let's say, I'm a, let's say that I'm a father, but I'm also a judge. And let's say, what's your name? <coughs> Let's say George is my son, okay? Now, how do I want to treat him? I want to treat him father-son relationship. That's what I want. But let's say George messes up and he does something and he ends up in my courtroom and I have to find him guilty, right? So that means I, because of because I was not satisfied, I have to treat him like a judge, But once the law is satisfied, 
Now, you know, I can go visit him in prison. <laughs> you know, once he gets out, I can bring him back into my home. I can reinstate him. I can treat him finally at, like a father, right? And so you need to understand that in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, God was not able to treat people like a father. There's no, there's no Old Testament saint even that Jesus Christ dwelt in. They weren't born again. They had the Holy Spirit that would come upon them, some of them, for special anointings. But they were just given the empowerment of God to perform a certain task. They weren't given the indwelling presence of God so that their very nature and being were changed and made one with God. Okay, so you've got a lot, you've got a whole covenant shift that takes place. Jesus said, if you want to know me, if you want to know the Father, know me. In fact, he doesn't even say that. He says, Philip's like, <clears throat> and Thomas are like, we, we don't know where you're going, we don't know the way. Just just show us the Father. You know, just come on, let's get, get this over with. And how many people do you have in the in the charismatic church? Saying, oh God, show us your glory. And Jesus is like, have I been so long with you? Have I been so long with you? That you've not come to know me yet. You haven't come to know that I am living inside of you. I am the hope of glory. I am the revelation of glory. Do you understand that? We've got so many people crying out for God to come. And they haven't recognized that when He's come, He lives inside of you. And you live now inside of Him. We keep stepping back and we use Old Testament psalms and scriptures a lot of times in our worship. It's not that that's bad, but we need to understand that something has shifted. We used to cry out for God's presence. Now we carry God's presence. We used, to, we used to long for Him. Like, God, Daddy, Daddy, we're hungry for You. We need You. We need You. We need You. You know, how would you like it if you came over to my house and my kids walked up to you and said, We need our Daddy. We need our Daddy. You'd think, Where is He? What's wrong? How, did He just leave here? Oh, no, He's upstairs. We, we just saw Him this morning. But we need our Daddy. <laughs> you know, you think... There's something wrong here. They don't realize that their daddy's living with them. They don't, I mean, they feel like they're dead. You understand what I'm saying? And sometimes we're very conscious of our need. We're very conscious of our desire. And, and we think that... Uh, but if we're not careful, there is this underlying lack of revelation that's driving all that. There's this... There's this sense of separation that I'm here, that God's there. Instead of God is, He's come to dwell inside of me. He's made me brand new. And He lives in me and I live in Him. My innards are going with God. Now how does that work? Now sometimes I start talking like this and people start thinking, well, I don't know, I feel like God's in me. I just don't want you know, it would feel like, you know, I just had like four cups of coffee or something. You know, like, yeah! <laughs> and they're thinking that's what it's going to feel like. Um, but listen, it, that's sensual. It, it's simply, listen, look how Jesus moves through this. He says, if you had known me, you would have known my Father. From now on, you know him. What did he say? Uh, okay, uh, I just said, just show us the Father. You said you don't have any idea. I've been with you so long, and yet you're not. From now on, you know it. Oh, okay. <laughs> know it. You see what he's saying? He's like, well, you've got everything you need. You've already got I've lived with you. I've manifested myself to you for three years. Stop believing you don't see Him. Stop believing you don't have Him. Believe you have seen Him. It's simply you've got to make a shift. You've got to come into agreement with the Word of God. You've got to, you've got to just say... 
I see the truth of who God is and how God feels about me and what He does and what He can do through me and everything that He says. It's true. Uh, stop the, the, the discussion in here. Stop the analyzing. Stop the, the uh, I wish I just had. You know, if I could just have this, then I'd really be close to God. Sometimes, you know, when people share their testimony, it can be a good thing because it can encourage faith. And the testimony can help, uh, can actually unlock the very same thing for, ha for happening in you. But if it don't happen in you like it happened in them, then you think you don't have what they got. And that's not true. I want to let you know, I have three children. I do not treat them the same. I love them the same. I do not treat them the same. Why? They're not the same. <laughs> I got a 16-year-old boy who's turning into a man. I got a, and he's an outgoing go-getter. And I got a 14-year-old girl who, she's not an outgoing go-getter. And then I got a uh, a nine-year-old pistol of a girl who thinks that she can do anything that her brother and sister can do, and if she can't, then it ain't fair. <laughs> you know? i got to make sure, uh, you know, I'm doing different things with different ones of them. They're different. Amen. But what they all need to know is Daddy loves me. I know Daddy. Daddy's got me. He's raising me. I'm not trying to be fair. You know what I'm trying to be? I'm trying to be loving. I'm trying to be responsible. I'm trying to raise them up to know the heart of God. Yeah. And what each of them need is something a little bit different. Yeah. So you know what? You've got what you need. If you needed it, you would have got it already. Mm -hmm. Jesus, when you said, Jesus, come live inside of me, then you know what? He didn't put a little piece of him in you. All the fullness of God is in Christ. This is Colossians. And you have been made complete in Him. Colossians chapter 2, verse like 9, 10, 11, somewhere in there. Okay? Why? All the fullness of God is in Jesus Christ. Was there anything of God that was not in Him? No. God downloaded Himself into time, space, and history. In a person. He was, he was live streaming himself in Jesus. Right? He, Jesus was the monitor of heaven. He was the flat screen jumbotron that everybody could see. This is what God looks like. Why? He bared the image of the Father. He was the man who was bearing the image of the Father. Right? He said, it's not me you see, it's my Father living in me. So when it was Jesus was hanging on the cross, you know, a lot of times we get people who have, they're okay, they believe that Jesus is a good guy and Jesus wants to save them. But a lot of times we've been preaching the gospel like we got this really angry Father. Just let me have one more. Beat the fool out of them for all the wrong things they've done. They're sin. I can't stand to look at them. You know, and Jesus says, Oh, Father, just beat me instead. You know? And so we get this, we get this thing in our mind where we got this, you know, uh, schizophrenic God, you know, like, who are we gonna meet today? You know, is it gonna be the angry God or is it gonna be the nice God? You know, just, just hope he's a nice God by the time you get to it, kind of thing. And and you need to understand that when you see Jesus. It's the Father finally being able to have a body through which he, someone who's bearing His image, who's not speaking their own things, but someone who's speaking His words, someone who's loving with His love. So now all the lepers, remember the lepers, you know, they had to live as outcasts, and, and there were some laws about that. But they might think that God has rejected them. Because you know you got all these little Bible verses, right? And finally, God's got a man that he can run up and hug him and say, No! I didn't reject you not a bit. Be healed. This is your day. You understand? There's a lawgiver and there's a daddy. And he said, Lawgiving don't work. And I want you to see that. 
It's not just that you need better rules. It's not just that you don't need to know the rules to live by and the wisdom so that you can pull it off of yourself. You need life. You don't have life apart from Christ. You need a different life form put inside of you so that it's your very nature that's different. So that it's your nature to love. So that it's your nature to walk in freedom. So that it's your nature to walk in peace and in joy. And so often we've been taught the Christian life has a number list of little rules. Not only do you have the Old Testament rules, but now you've got the example of Jesus and you've got, the, you've got all the little rules and he wants you to be joyful, peaceful. That ain't what he wants you to be. If you could be that, then he would just say, be that. <laughs> but you can't be that. That's a fruit of the Spirit. How many times have you ever seen an apple tree out in the middle of a field going, oh, God, I'm Just trying as might, you know, to get, to get the apples. I'm trying to bear fruit. Trying to, you know, it ain't that. What he's got, he's just sucking in the, 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 the water and the nutrients. He just, I, he just get filled. He just get, he just suck, soaking in the sunlight. You know, he's just, he's in the environment that he needs. And just being himself and drawing into himself from what he's planted in. Do you understand? You, Christian, have been rooted in Christ and grounded in Christ. Your unseen parts, that's what roots are, right? Mm -hmm. You don't go around saying, man, that tree got nice roots. You know, I mean, you might see a little bit, but the roots are down in the ground. You don't see them things. But that's where the life comes. Do you understand you got roots? You're rooted and grounded in Christ. So what is it that you see in Him that you need in you? See, we're up here trying to change the fruit. We're up here trying to change the branches uh, and the bark and the leaves. And what we really need to do is change trees. We need to stop living out of the old man, right? Who's rooted in this world. Who's, who's grounded in this world and just bears fruit unto death. You can't get a, a, a tree to change fruit. It's a, if it bears bad fruit, it's a bad tree, right? The only tree that bears good fruit is the good tree. There's two trees in that garden. There's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay? I'll just know what's good and I'll know what's evil and I'll get the job done. Good luck. We've been doing that for umpteen thousand years or whatever. <laughs> Not that long. But we've been doing that for a long time and how's that working for us? Just learning what's good and what's evil. Don't get the job done. Well. You've got to have what the other tree the tree of life. You've got to have the life of God living inside of you. It's, it's not hard for God to love his neighbors. It's not hard for God to be peaceful and full of joy. It's not hard for God to, to know the truth, is it? It's really not. Jesus simply realized that's the life that I draw from. That's the life that I contain. He manifested the life of the Father. And so when you and I are born again, that's what we're entered into. So now, our primary relationship is invisible. It's on the inside. I'm now, Jesus has become the door through which I enter into Him and I have pasture. Remember in John chapter 10? I go in and I come out and I don't get pasture. Do you remember that? In John chapter 10, my, I am the door of the sheep. 
And my sheep will enter in through me, and they will go in and come out, and they will find pasture. You know, that's not talking about going in and you get saved, and you come out, you're not saved. You go in and get saved, and you come out, and you're not saved. That means I'm the door. Now they enter in to me, right? You step into a door. It's like this portal. All of a sudden now, you're like, it, you know, you just stepped in. All of a sudden, you're in the door. And you find, now I've entered in, and I can actually get life for my soul. I can get nourishment for my soul. Every single one of you. You know, our bodies are like a parable to us, right? We're hungry. We need to get filled. We, we live by what we take into us. Amen. Right? We live by the water that we drink. We Amen. live by the food that we eat. We live by the air that we breathe. Our whole body is a parable to us. We live by what we take in. If we stop taking in, then we stop living. Right? Jesus needed to be with His Father. Why? Because He was living by what He took into Him. The Father was in Him. So there's times where He had to just stop dealing with the outside. He'd go alone and he just... You ever seen that Timothy Green movie, you know, a little kid who stands up and he just absorbs the sun because he's kind of this mixture of a boy and a plant? <laughs> Very interesting. But that's exactly what we're like. We're rooted and grounded in Christ, and there's times that when our when our spiritual energy starts to get low, yeah. instead of just plowing through and you know, I'm just gonna try harder. You know, there's times where you just have to do that just by faith and thank you, Jesus, that you're in me and that this is something yeah. that, that you need. I get myself out of the way. The Lord my God is my strength, and you just keep on going. Okay? Uh, but I'm telling you, even Jesus in the midst of the most busiest times of his life, he, he even if he had to lose sleep to get up early to be with the Father. And he would find time to be alone. Because he knew that life flew, flowed by what he took into him. And you know the neat thing about it is you're always able to receive even as you're giving out. Because it's not you giving out anymore. Now it's you're just giving what you're receiving. Amen. You know, the Father loves me so much. And so it's not hard for me to love you because it's almost like I'm just a conduit of someone else loving you through me. <laughs> okay. So... <clears throat> Let me ask you this. Did Jesus ever send anybody away who wanted healing? No. no. Did he ever say, hey, God's teaching you a lesson. Sorry, you got to just keep that? No. Okay. So why do we have people who say that to them? Because you know why? Because we got puzzle pieces instead of the cover. Jesus is the cover. He is the Word made flesh, rightly divided and interpreted. So I always just say, well, did Jesus do it that way? Did Jesus, uh, what did Jesus do? How does he do it? Because he is the prototype of how the Son of God lives. Now he lives in me. So I'm always looking at that. So uh, so there's one one young lady here who, um, who asked me to pray for her. Her back got healed. Her eye still is in the process of being healed. Didn't get healed in, immediately. So what does that mean? Does that mean... Uh, uh, that everything I'm telling you is a lie? No, it means I'm growing up into Christ. If Christ didn't have to flow through me, through my brain, through my hands, through my body, she'd have walked out of here seeing and not have back pain last night. Right? I'm, so I, I just say, listen, I'm not going to lower my expectation to, to ex, uh, current experience level. I'm going to look at the Word of God and say, this is what Jesus did. He's the Word of God. He's, he's the revelation of God. So I'm growing up into that. Right? So where I don't see the, the experience matching what, what Jesus experienced, what did I say? I'm still growing. So I don't, what I do is I take responsibility to heal the sick, but I don't take responsibility for their sickness. I don't take the blame for it. I take responsibility to do the Word of God Right? Jesus said, go heal the sick. That's my responsibility. It's not God's responsibility. You understand? God says you do it. So when we obey and heal the sick, then He supplies the power. That's something He's only going to get done through His co-workers. <laughs> okay? He didn't say, 
you know, pray so I can pray, pray that I might do it. He told us to do it. All right. Now, here's something. Here's something that goes with that. So imagine uh, somebody here, somebody who's been a counselor who's been around for a long time. Let's say something happens in their life, and then all of a sudden they fall off the bandwagon, and they they have a relapse or something like that. Okay. Now the enemy could use something like that. Uh, in people's minds to, to start bringing all kinds of doubt and that kind of thing. But listen, here's, here's the deal. Is your faith in someone else's ability to appropriate uh, what, what God's Word is, or is your faith in the Word of God for yourself? Mm-hmm. Right? Our standard is not someone else. We can't, we can't say, oh, well, look, they did it, and now we use that as an excuse to go do the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, people sometimes say, well, there's so many hypocrites in the church, uh, so I don't go to church, or I'm not part of the church, or I'm, I, I just keep myself away from it. I know some of y'all have been hurt hurt by, by uh, judgmental religion, I, and I'm not trying to say that there's not, not that going out there, because I believe that the biggest enemy of God is religion. Mm. <laughs> it's not his friend. <laughs> God is a God of... God's a God of relationship. Religion is completely different. Religion just takes all the relationship out of it and makes you perform and work harder and beats you up if you don't. I've done it. So that's not what I'm talking about. But uh, there's times where where people have have, have used uh, other people for excuses. I, I once saw something that said, you know, not going to church because there's hypocrites there is almost like saying... Uh, I'm not going to go to the gym because there's fat people there. <laughs> you know, or I'm not going to go to the diet classes because there's fat people there. I mean, we need Jesus, don't we? Okay? So let's not use other people as our standard. Uh, but if some, uh, if somebody succumbs to a sin or is overcome uh, with a sin, does that mean that God didn't give them everything that they need to walk in freedom and victory? Or does that mean that they weren't walking in what God had provided? Right? Okay. So they, there might be some things they need to learn how to do that. Uh, there's, there's a reality there. So what I say, that the same thing with holiness, it's the same thing with healing. That Jesus Christ has provided not only forgiveness in, for our sin and victory over sin, but that He has also provided for us victory over all evil, which includes sickness and disease. And so we are, I think, in a lot of ways, as a church, discovering on a wide-scale level how to walk in His victory over sickness and disease and to recognize that it's not something different. At the root, it's the same. Sin and sickness find their root in Satan and his work. There was no sin and there was no sickness in the garden. It wasn't until we let Satan in that death death came in through sin, right? That's what the Word of God says. Sickness is just little attacks of death. Every sickness is trying to kill you. If if, if God didn't uh, give you a natural immune system... Uh, the simplest cold would take you out. And spiritual, your, your strongest immune system is the Spirit of God. It's the victory of Jesus. So that's just something to understand is that it's not bad news, it's good news to know God is for healing. God is for holiness. God is for uh, wholeness in our lives. He's for love. And so wherever you find yourself on your experience or your journey, you can say, you can just come into agreement with Jesus. From now on, I know Him. From now on, I know Him. I know the Lord. I know Jesus. I know Jesus lives in me. I know who I am. It's not that i got to get something different. I just need to stick with this Lord that I know because I know that I know Him. You understand that? You need to make a shift. instead of, and, and, all, and sometimes what you're doing is by doing that, your spirit 
operates by faith in the Word of God. Your spirit operates by the love of God, the redemptive, sacrificial love of God. Your spirit operates by hope. Remember Paul said, these abide faith, hope, and love. Your spirit operates that way. Sometimes people are like, how do I know the difference between my soul and my spirit? I can tell you when you're operating in the spirit because there's life in there. There's times where I'm speaking and I can tell, man, it registers. Faith hears. Remember in Galatians, it says, you know, so let me tell you, let me ask you, did you receive the the spirit of God by uh, giving up bacon for breakfast, (laughs) uh, by growing your little sideburns out and uh, getting some skin snipped off? Uh, Or did you receive the Spirit of God by the hearing of faith? Do you understand? Sometimes we hear. Sometimes faith hears. Your spirit (coughs) hears the Word of God outside and there's something inside of you that goes, yeah. (coughs) Even when your mind's like, this is not what I've ever thought. This is not what I've ever believed. That there's something that rises up in you that's going, that's, oh, mm, mm, you know, yeah, you know. There's, do you understand that? And it doesn't always, it's not always real strong, but you just kind of know there's this woodedness of the Spirit with our spirit. Why? Because the Spirit of God wrote this Word. And so this Word corresponds with, with what's in you. This the spirit is called the spirit of truth. In Jesus, the way the reason that he lived the way that he lived is because of who lived inside of him. Verse 10 he says, Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? I mean, picture that. Jesus is standing there. He's saying, Don't you believe? I am inside the Father, and the Father is inside of me. He's not just talking about his body. His body's in Jerusalem. You know, you're in Jerusalem. What do you mean? You're in the Father. No, he's like, you're looking on with your eyes on the outside. Don't you understand that inside of me, my spirit is dwelling in the Father. I've never been disconnected from Him. I know His voice. I know the truth of who He is. I know that He lives in me, that He loves me. In me. That's where I that's why I can live with you knuckleheads and not get discouraged. That's why I can that's why I can believe and, and know what God can do for you because I'm not looking at you. Do you understand that's how you love people? You don't look at their behavior. You don't look at what your eyes see and what they see even about themselves. You look at them that they are worth the blood of Jesus to God. That God is able to set them free when when the light that's in you gets inside of them, boom, everything changes. You know, you can just feel, well, it's always been dark. It's always been dark. And then all of a sudden you flip the light switch on and you're like, oh, wow. You know, and at first it may not look pretty, so you've got to be willing to see things really as they are. You've got to be willing to see, man, that is ugly. But guess what? That's not you. Now you can clean up the room. (laughs) Because now you own it instead of it owning you. Because before you were in the dark and you didn't know what you were bumping into and what you were chained to and what you were stumbling over. You know, you thought, oh man, this is just the way things are and I'm all bumped and bruised and life sucks. (laughs) And then all of a sudden Jesus comes in. The lights go on and at first you now... What you never cared about. Now you care. And so if you're not careful, if you don't realize your authority and the power and how to live in that, that you can become more miserable sometimes. Because now what you used to not care about, I used to really enjoy sleeping around. I used to enjoy when I could score, you know, some drugs. Or I used to enjoy when I could could uh, do this and that. Because I didn't care. And I was just trying to get by, but there was something inside me the whole time that was just kind of, this is wrong, this is this ain't right, there's something more, you, you live in empty. And then, and then I turned to Jesus and I saw, man, the lights came on, and I was like, oh gosh, this is wonderful. And when I lived in simply what I received, 
Thank you, God, that you love me with a love that I could never deserve. Thank you that you bought it for me and you bought me for that love. You want me to be in this forever. Do you understand when you're living simply enjoying in everything that you've received from Jesus, that that's roots. That's drawing what's in Him into you. And that begins all of a sudden what looked like a winter tree. I thought the thing was dead. There was no leaves. There was no growth. And then all of a sudden the sun came out. And the rains came out. <coughs> and all of a sudden that thing started going. Didn't look much different for a while. But then it just kept. <laughs> and it's getting all filled with life. And then eventually it's like, I can't contain this life. And then a leaf comes out. And then another leaf. And then you know what? And then the leaf ain't enough. Now it's like, oh God, I'm going to explode. You know what? And then the fruit. That's the Christian life. You never say, okay, now, now I know I'm loved. We live by faith. It's not just something that you believe. You live by faith. You live by it. So I don't... There's a... How do you do that? By entering into Jesus, into the presence of the Father, and getting your eyes on everything that you've seen on Him, and off of you. Off of you. Off of how you feel. Um, I'm going to show you just something real quick. Jesus goes on to say, he, he gives us a little clue. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own initiative, but the Father abiding in me does His works. Do you understand that the only words that have authority in Jesus were the Father's words. I, do, I don't speak on my own initiative. I don't look with my eyes, draw some conclusions and speak it out based on what I'm experiencing out here. It's my Father's <laughs> words that have authority in me. And those are the words that I speak. Now, a lot of times... You are given authority and you're speaking. You, we always speak out of what we give authority in our lives. Oh, yeah. So sometimes we give, pers per, you know, we just have a perspective about some things. We just feel that way. And we say things about it that are based on our own conclusions, our own mm -hmm. experience, but they didn't come from God. That's not God's perspective on the matter. <clears throat> Do you understand? Uh, so some, just a little simple thing, you know, like how you feel. Some of us go around living on the basis of how we feel. We we feel like we we feel rejected, and so people will speak this, speak this, and they're like, "Yeah, I know that's true of everybody else in the world, <laughs> but they don't know my story," you know. And so we are, you know, and so we exalt things. We exalt our story over God's truth. We exalt our feelings over what God says. And, and there's times where you just have to say, no. You exercise your spirit. It's not about not feeling it, especially not at first, right? It's about not submitting to it. It's about not giving it authority in our lives. And some of us have had people say things that have happened to us that we've been carrying around and we've, we've given that so much authority huh. because we focused on it as being the, the identifying mark in us. Or the words, that, that was, and Jesus said no. Because you know what? Jesus had people calling him the chief of all demons. Mm. Right? Amen. He did. Yeah. That's right. He had people calling him that. Now, if Jesus had been one of these insecure ministers who just going around trying to politic his way into 
uh, spiritual significance, uh, you know, and fame and stuff. He had been, you know, trying to do damage control and all that kind of stuff, and nothing like that. <coughs> Jesus is like, that isn't me. And then he showed the truth about who that was. Do you understand? There's times you are going to have to defy words. You're going to have that aren't true. You're going to have to defy feelings that aren't true. You're going to have to defy sometimes even your own body. The Word of God says I'm healed. Amen. So this does not tell me that I'm not healed. Amen. This tells me that this is not from God. <laughs> In Jesus' name, go. Right? Mm -hmm. So there's times where you simply just you just grow in that. Yeah. And you stand there. And then it, you get brothers and sisters to agree with you because that's what the Word of God says. Um, but you never let... Well, so here's what I see people doing with healing. And then you can do it with a lot of things, okay? So somebody says, well, I need, I need prayer for my, for my elbow. To my elbow. And I'm saying, Jesus' name, I will be healed. And then move it down. Ah, oh, still hurt. Sorry. You know, but this is what they'll do. Is that they'll, what some people do is that they'll say, okay, let me pray for your elbow. In Jesus' name, elbow will be healed. Now they got faith. Mm. Now they pull their hand off and they say, move it. And this person said, still hurts. Mm. And then all of a sudden they say, oh, that didn't work. So now they unplug their faith cord. You know, from the wall. Right? Because now, what happened? They're believing what their eyes see and their ears hear. They're not believing the Word of God anymore. They're believing their experience. And so one of the things that sh that needs to shift is, is that you believe the truth that's in Jesus. And the reason that Jesus lived the way that He did is because He only spoke the words that He heard from His Father. Do you know you would stop saying a lot of things that you're saying if you began to say only what Jesus, what you received from Jesus? Meaning, in the Word. You know, because a lot of times, oh, you know, Jesus only spoke, did what He saw the Father doing. We've seen the Father. Okay? So, we see that the Father heals the sick. We see that the Father hung on the cross and shows our value. We've seen all these things. And so, we need to speak only what we see in Jesus, He is the truth. And so we're going to talk some more about that. Um, so I want to take a little break because I think you guys are accustomed to getting breaks and sometimes. <laughs>